well, 23rd of July. Um, I think I have the wrong date on the title and description of this video. Not a big deal. I'll be able to live with that. Um, what I've managed to do is I've, I've managed to bring up the RISC V uh, machine that I was trying to experiment with yesterday. This is just a very quick glance at a FreeBSD Unix machine, which is implemented on top of a 8-way or 8-CPU RISC-V 64-bit um, architecture. Now, this is a totally new architecture. It's completely unstable. It's, at best, uh, I would refer to it as, uh, well, it's not beta technology. It's further down the alphabet. It's, uh, call it gamma, gamma technology, uh, which means that at any given moment in time, it could blow up, let out a puff of smoke, kick your dog, and spit in your coffee. That's what RIS 5 will do. It's very, very new, very unstable. Uh, furthermore, this entire operating system, this machine, um, well, there it is. It's, I called it Ganymede. Um, which is uh, as good a name as any, but this particular machine, um, I built it from scratch, everything, all the source code, all of it, the kernel, everything, um, because there's no other way. There's no such thing as an operating system that you can install on RISC-V that just doesn't exist. Um, but I have a compiler that's enough to at least get started, to at least try to maybe compile code and, and, and look at a few things. Um, now, yesterday I was looking at just Hello World. Now, in this case, I, I just went and created a directory called Foo. <clears throat> and I think I have... Uh, now, Foo.c here, this is a bit more involved. I think this is... Yeah, this is example code that I pulled off of the Penn State University website. That's from their uh, their computer science uh, third year three one one computer science course. There's really nothing in here that's particularly fascinating. All it is is a uh, it's a small bit of code that just prints out very basic information about what kind of data types do you have on this system and, and things like that. It's not anything worth getting excited about. Um, now, do I have GCC anywhere? I do. There it is. Um, if we check, th that's the GNU C compiler, same thing I was using yesterday. Uh, it is a 64-bit executable. It's a little Endian, but this is a UCB RIS 5 architecture. Uh, so in the ELF header, there's going to be some information about the RISC 5 uh, machine or the RISC 5 architecture. Uh, I think UCB really should be University of California, Berkeley. It's RISC-V technology that came from there. And I'm going to point right at Hennessy and Patterson, uh, the guys that are the author of a truly fantastic textbook called simply Computer Architecture. Um, in fact, I think it's called Computer Architecture, A Quantitative Approach. And it's in its sixth edition now, which introduces Risk v I've had multiple editions of it. I haven't picked up the sixth edition yet. I was waiting for Risk v to age just a little bit, um, you know, a couple of years. In any case, uh, I do have a GCC compiler. Uh, it's version, I'm pretty sure it's 8.3.0. Let's just check it. No, it's 8.2.0. That's good enough. Um, I can try to do a compile here, but I know there's going to be problems because um, the link stage is going to have difficulties locating and finding uh, very basic things like libc and libgcc. Those two libraries, the compiler doesn't know how to locate them because the linker doesn't know how to locate them because LD config has not been run. It, it, this is all going to get very complicated very quickly. Suffice it to say, it's a little uh, tweaky and uh, nothing quite works the way you think it should. Um, 
but it works well enough. I mean, clearly it's running right now, and it has a, uh, a Z pool. It's based on, uh, there's a ZFS file system there. There's not a whole lot of space, it's very small, but if I check Z pool status, it'll come back and say, well, there it is. The pool's name is actually the pool's name is actually named after the architecture RV64, which is RISC-V, 64-bit, and then the IMAFDC. Every one of those letters means something. It means a capability or a um, a opcode or machine ability that's in this particular architecture. So the I means integer operations are supported. The M is for math. Um, I can't remember the A. F is for floating point. I'd have to look it up. I have the entire prospectus and I have all the specification documents on this because I had to, to, to port all this. Um, <clears throat> suffice it to say that it's a, uh, it's just a two-way mirror that's got, it's a two-way mirror with a, uh, with a hot spare. Very simple. It, I really wanted to test the port of the ZFS file system into a totally new architecture, and I managed to do the port, and I've, I've got ZFS and the Z pool up and running, and it's been running now for, well, I can't remember when I did this. I built it a month and a half, two months ago, and anyway, it's not the world's most stable. Uh, also, up here at the top of the screen, you'll see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight processors. Um, this is all. Uh, this is me monitoring the CPU usage um, and the memory of the host machine um, that's hosting the RISC-V virtual machine. Because there's no way to run an eight-way RISC-V machine on hardware because the hardware doesn't exist. It's just that simple. Um, Anyway, let's let's just see if I can get a compile going here. Uh, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete. Uh, this is a binary. I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to get rid of this object file. And I'm going to get rid of the assembly. And what I'm left with is just the source code. There it is. Call foo. You know, nice and simple. Exact same as what I did yesterday with Hello World. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the compile and toss out the output as um, assembly. I'm really interested in seeing the assembly language, so we'll give that a shot. I'm not going to bother with pre-processed C source. I'm going to skip that stage and go right to assembly language. Um, let's give that a shot, shall we? So first off, there's which GCC. There it is. I'm going to set up an environment variable the exact same as I did yesterday. I'm just going to set up an environment variable that says this is where my compiler is. Okay, so export CC. A little bit of lag here. Wouldn't be surprised actually if the whole thing drops. Yeah, a little bit of lag. <clears throat> um, so now I can say $CC um, dash STD standard equals C99. Uh, dash F, no built-in, same as yesterday. Uh, I'm just going to do a translation. I'm going to say I want my input file and, and an output file. So my output file is going to be foo-s, which is the assembly, and my input is going to be foo.c. End of story. Done. So it's going to crank on that. All the CPUs show a burst of activity at the top of the screen, and it's done. So we take a look here. There's foo.s. It's probably going to be hundreds of lines long. That's a thousand lines long. A thousand lines of assembly language. This is not hello world, okay? But why not? I mean, I mean we may as well take a look at it. <clears throat> It'll simply show there's the input file, foo.c. There's a, a lot of global static string variables that are being used in function calls. Um, we'll just get through, we'll get through that stuff and get to the, uh, the entry point of the, uh, the actual code. This is all stuff which is being fed to printf, actually, all these strings. And we finally get to main. Same as yesterday with hello world, there's going to be a main function. 
And here we are. We're looking at a main function. There it is. And it starts off with uh, some stack pointer uh, adjustments. And in RIS-5, of course, this is, well, we're looking at the assembly language right here. I'm going to stop right here. I'm not going to bother going any further with a thousand lines of assembly of RIS-5. But what's important is that is the assembly language for the RISC-V architecture. So my compiler, GCC, it took in the source code in good old-fashioned C99, C source code. Well, that's the internationally accepted language for the planet Earth. I mean, that's what the world can use. C99 standard C source code. However, that gets translated into the assembly language of the specific machine that we're on right now. And you're looking at it. There it is, RISC-V. And you can even see where it says call printf. And we covered this in detail yesterday looking at Hello World. I'm just doing a compiler test. I'm going to, I am going to write Hello World here, okay? I'm going to just, I'll do it. But for now, I just want to do a compile of this particular piece of code. Okay, so we've got foo.s. Let's see if uh, we can take a look at it. I'm hitting enter and hoping I get a reply from this thing. Bear in mind that I'm actually uh, using SSH, which is Secure Shell Encrypted uh, Login, into this machine. So this RISC-V machine is running SSH and running network daemons and such. And that's how I'm connected to it. But I'm suddenly getting... I'm getting no response from it. Let me check the console. So the console is still there. A lot of processes running. That's fine. But for reasons unknown, this session just died. I'm not, I'm not even remotely surprised. Really, I should just do this on the console and give up on any concept of, that I'm going to get a stable network connection in and out of this machine. Um, it's a pretty unstable box. That's, that's what i got to tell you. Uh, I'm wondering if I can do a, uh, an attention on it. Let me just give it a shot. Yeah, it just dropped the, it dropped the, just dropped, just like that. Okay. Um, the entire, yeah, gone. We're, we're out of the machine entirely. We lost everything. So I'm going to go back in and log in again and start over. I'm not the least bit surprised. Okay, let me just log in first off to the host box. Done. And then from there, i got to do an SSH-2-4-E. This, I need a control character. Uh, my name is how I'm going to log in on a port of 10,000. to. This is really, you know, user-friendly, let me tell you. And I'm going to go to localhost, 127.0.0.1. And I should get, uh, there it is, there's Ganymede, comes back and says, yeah, I'm here. Well, if you're there, what happened to you? Where did you go? And look at that, we're back in again. Go figure. I'm going to change my prompt to just a letter, uh, I'm going to do RV64 and stop. That, that's good enough for me, put in a dollar sign in. There, there's my prompt now. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. Back to foo. Um, I've lost my environment variable. Um, so I, I can set it up again, I guess. CC equals USR local bin. Welcome to the world of dealing with really unstable uh, experimental technology. Really unstable. Okay, so the assembly's still there. Good enough. Let's let's move that into let's try to do the you know the compile at least and get an object code file, which is going to be relocatable relocatable object code, elf file. Nothing new. This is exactly what we did yesterday with Hello World, except I spent two hours on Hello World yesterday. Okay, so again, there's the compiler. There's a huge number of flags that I could be using for RISC V. Trust me, a large number of them. I'm not going to bother with anything fancy right now. 
Okay, um, I don't need to specify a language anymore because it's assembly language. It's native to the machine. I don't have to specify C99 or anything like that. We're 100% native. Um, okay, good enough. So let's just do a compile. Output is going to be foo.o. The input's going to be foo.s. End of story. Go. Done. Did we get a file? We got a file. foo.o. Beautiful. Is it big? It's big. Wonderful. Uh, well, it's 33,000 bytes. That's not that big a deal. Is it an ELF file? I bet you it is. foo.o. Yeah, there it is. Little Endian, LSB, 64-bit, University of California, Berkeley, RISC V, version... It's, you know, there's nothing new here. This is the same as yesterday. It's just we're on a totally different architecture. Yesterday, I looked at x86. I also looked at ARM technology yesterday. Today, we're looking at RISC V. Again, the process is more or less the same. Um, okay, so I'm going to do an ELF... Uh, we'll do an OD on this too. OD-AX-TX1, same as yesterday. This is all covered yesterday. Uh, verbosely, number of bytes, I'm at 32 bytes, uh, foo.o, and I'm going to get an ELF file. So it's going to start off at a 7F and then three bytes that are ELF in, in ASCII, and then some other stuff. This is 64 bit, so it's probably going to be a 020101 type of deal. Uh, so there it is, 020101. Okay, 64-bit little Indian. There's my ELF. And down here is F3. F3, as I covered yesterday, that is the machine architecture ID number. Interesting that it's only a one-byte number because I'm telling you, we've got a lot of entries in the ELF header. I'm not going to get into that today. I covered it off yesterday for two hours. Okay. Good enough. Let's do a read elf on this. Uh, foo.o. And I'm only interested in, you know, the first page. I don't, I don't need to see everything. Stop. Okay. So, yes, it's elf64. It's two's complement little endian. The, the integer math hasn't changed. The, the version's not going to change. Application binary interface. Yes, this is Unix System 5. Um, Application binary interface version 0, I'm going to check on that later. The machine is RISC-5, and more of the usual information, the same stuff we saw yesterday. Okay, here comes the hard part. The really hard part is compiling and linking that foo.o object file into an executable that we can actually run. That's tough right now. There's going to be a problem. It's not going to know how to find libgcc or libc, and I, I, I'll address that by telling the compiler specifically, hey, go look over here. I know where it is. Go look over here. It, it's very easy. There's a flag, but I'll show you how it fails first, okay? So uh, we're going to do the output's going to be foo. The input's going to be foo.o. That's it. Full stop. Nothing else. Hit enter. Watch it fail. Ready? Oh, look at that. It doesn't know where to find libgcc or libc. Now, I know that that stuff is in USR lib. libgcc. Let's take a look. There it is. And also, under USR lib, USR lib. This is like the default location for this stuff is libc. Whew. Well, actually, I should have been more specific. libc dot so shared object. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do the recompile again. I'm just going to hit the up arrow, except this time I'm going to provide an option, dash L, where to locate your libraries. That's it. You just got to tell the compiler, hey, go look over here. When you go looking for a library to link, there it is. That's easy. What did we get for an output? There it is. Exact same as yesterday. Saw this on ARM yesterday, 32-bit ARM. Saw this on x86. Um, 
today, really, I could easily do this on IBM 64-bit power technology. I've got that up and running. Um, but there it is. Beautiful. Same as yesterday. Nothing new here. Let's do a read elf on that. It's not going to tell us anything new. Yep, yeah, now it's an executable file. That's the type of file is executable. It says so right there. Executable file. Foo.o, on the other hand, is not an executable file. It's a relocatable file. It's object code. It's not executable. I'm going to run it. Let's run it, shall we? Sure. Run it, and it outputs a whole pile of stuff, which is what the code does. It just kicks out size of characters, unsigned short integers, how many bytes are they, you know, the usual floating point types, floating, double, long double, floating complex, double complex, long double complex numbers. Um, it's all the information's here. It's, this is nothing new. Um, I'm perfectly happy that it runs. Okay, great. Okay, let's do something really simple on this RISC-V machine. How about hello? Hello world. Let's just write it. First off, we got a couple of include files. So include, if I could spell include, uh, the standard IO, stdio.h, that header. Same as yesterday. I'm going to also include the standard lib for my exit, uh, my exit status. Uh, I covered that off yesterday stdlib.h, there we go, standard lib, thing of beauty. Um, now we need our main function for hello world. Well, it's an integer function, at least in my world it is. Main, there we go, and I am going to process command line arguments. So this is going to be int argc here. I could call it anything, I could call it int foo barf, dog, doesn't matter, but pretty much a de facto standard what the world uses is argc, which is the number. C is the count of arguments or the count of things on the command line. Ah, great. Okay, char, pointer, argv, vector, string, great, done, done. And I'm going to actually hit enter and then put my bracy down here. Um, Four spaces, I'm not going to use a tab, four spaces, and printf. Printf, hello world. Hello world, there you go. Uh, exclamation mark, because that's what's on, I think that's what's on page seven of the uh, Kerrigan and Ritchie uh, C programming book, right on page seven. It's got an exclamation mark, and I actually think the world is capitalized, I don't know. Anyway backslash n for my new line, and that's it. That's it. Let's return a status and get out of here. So return exit success. Done. Done. Uh, I like a blank line at the top and bottom. That's it. There's the entire program. That's hello.c. Let's compile it. $cc. Uh, I'm going to specify a standard. Standard equals the kind of language, uh, ISO 9899, 1999. I don't have to say online, I could just say C99, same thing. I'm just being kind of pedantic at the moment. Um, I want no built in optimization. F, no built in. That's important. I covered that yesterday. And uh, we're just going to uh, produce assembly. All right. So, the output file is going to be hello.s. Input is hello.c. Nothing new. Exact same as yesterday. I feel like I'm going in circles. All right. There's hello.s. All right. Uh, how many lines is that? Hello.s. Let's see. 30. All right. 30 lines. That's almost the same as, uh, as uh, the Intel, actually. Uh, cat with line numbers. Hello.s. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Why not? So there it is. 
the first few lines, one, two, three, four, five, is the file is low.c. Option, no pick. It's not program, uh, sorry, position independent code. That's interesting. I'll have to think about that. Uh, here comes some read only data, which is al that alignment three, by the way, means two to the power of three. I, you just got to know the assembly language for RISC V. There's different ways of specifying what's called memory alignment. So in this case, it's two to the power of three. That's eight. Um, it's eight byte aligned. So what's that? 64 bit? 64 bit alignment on a 64 bit machine. Not a big surprise. There's our string, hello world, with the same address tag that we saw yesterday on two different architectures across three different machines. Nothing new here. And then come down here and eventually we're going to see, um, going to set up some registers and it's going to make a call to printf, not put string. Okay. The assembly language looks fine. There's nothing wrong here. I'm not going to bother typing in the whole... Well, okay, I'll type it in. Why not? CC. I don't have to specify a language or anything. Uh, I just want to do a compile, though. So output to hello.o, object code, and hello.s, the assembly, is what I'm going to take in. Done. How big is that, by the way? I'm just curious. 1,272 bytes. Now, it's important to point out that I just compiled, that is to say, translated the assembly language to object code, relocatable object code. It's not linked, it's not executable, it's just the machine language object code that's going to be used later to produce an actual executable that will run on a machine. Alrighty, um, I really should be able to take the input as hello.c and get the exact same result, 1,272 bytes. I just have to specify those options. The standard, std equals standard. Standard is C99, which is the exact same thing as what I said before. I was just a little bit more verbose about it. ISO 9899 colon 1999 same thing uh, f no built in b u i o t in and compile it output an object file hello.c takes a little bit longer do you notice that that's because it's doing multiple things now what's the output look like the output is 1272 bytes Load I don't you get the exact same result because the compiler is doing the exact same thing that we're doing manually. It takes input C source code, translates it to the assembly language of the machine, and it does go through an intermediate step in there called pre processing. I'll cover that some other day. Um, then it takes the assembly language and does with the assembler, it produces object code. Now we're going to link it. Okay, so I'm just going to hit the up arrow because I like to keep things simple. So we're going to take the object code as input. The output's going to be an actual binary. Uh, we're not going to do anything fancy here at all other than specifying where to find USR lib, where to find the linkages that it needs to do the link stage. Now we're done. That's it. There you go, executable. Nothing new here. Run it, and there's hello world. Okay, so this is um, a RISC-V architecture machine. RISC-V, 64-bit. Well, I can do a uname dash A here. It'll come back, and it'll just say it's all this stuff, RISC-V. There's the kernel version, R348. Well, I built it from... The source code from the FreeBSD project. So I built the whole thing from the source code uh, revision 348983. Uh, there's been some changes since then. I just haven't got around to rebuilding this thing from scratch. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't feel like doing much else at the moment. I really don't. Um, 
I know that up in USR local, uh, I think I have in a build directory here, I was building, yeah, GNU make. So I was actually building some source code from real world projects, including Perl, Perl 5.30.0. Let me tell you, building Perl on this machine is painful. Yeah, I think that's the word I'm looking for. Painful. Also, I don't think I'm the right user right now to be doing any of this. Oh, no, I am. It's it's all in my name. That's great. Um, I can't remember what uh, what went wrong here with uh, Perl. I think the machine crashed or something like that. Uh, I'm not surprised. Let me, let me just take a look under... Uh, in the Perl directory. I just want to see if I did a config. I'm pretty sure I got a configuration going in there. Let's take a look. Oh, there's nothing there. Okay, great. You know what? I'm going to completely delete uh, that directory, remake it again. So now I've got a completely blank directory. I'll change directory in there, and I have a script that I wrote which sets up the entire environment and sets up compiler options, languages, and all kinds of stuff. And I've already written it, so I'm just going to run it in order to keep my life simple. I, I can't be bothered to do a whole lot of configuration setup. There we go. That's it. That's a setup script, by the way. <clears throat> it's a very good idea to have those kind of things in place if you know how to write them. I can't cover that off today. It's a little bit too technical and verbose and... It's a pain, is what it is. I just want to check my environment. So environment sort. I'm going to push that up to that that file there. Except I'm going to call it env2. Done. And I'm just going to check if there's any differences at all. I maybe there are. Maybe there's a difference. I don't know. Uh, maybe something's changed. Maybe I got something wrong. Um, yeah, there's nothing. It's everything's fine. Do I have a resize here? No, there's no resize. That's okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say lines equals 24, because that's that's the number of lines that are in the terminal right now. Lines equals 24. Export lines. Columns. It's 80 characters wide. This is really old school, let me tell you. Columns equals 80. I'm specifically telling the environment uh, the height and width of the the height and width of the uh, of the terminal that I'm in. You shouldn't really have to do this, but I'm, I'm going to specify it anyway. And then I'm going to uh, push out that file, and that probably takes care of the columns and lines for me. Um, now, here comes the really hard part: is doing the configuration of of Perl. Whoops! Helps if I know how to type. So the source code is right there. That's the source code. So bear with me for a second. I gotta go check another machine, um, a very complex machine. Just a second. I've got to uh, drag it around. Actually, I'm gonna log into a server in, in Toronto, actually and check a Perl configuration that I did there. And if not, do I want to do Perl right now? No, I'm looking at hours and hours of work to get this going. Yeah, let's not do this right now. Okay, you know what, quite frankly, I think uh, I'm gonna just say, risk five, it's currently running. I'm going to fiddle with this offline, off the stream, because who the heck wants to watch me mess around with some experimental machine? Um, I will just do this, though. I think I can do syscontrol, S-Y-S-C-T-L-A, grep, uh, S-M-P. I think that should come back and tell me that, yeah, it's a system which is designed for a maximum of 16 processors. It uh, currently has... Uh, eight processors, eight CPUs, eight cores. Um, you know, it's an eight-way machine. 
Right. Right. That's it. I'm going to stop at this point um, because this is getting ridiculously silly, actually. Uh, I'm happy that we got to take a look at Hello World, um, saw the source code, wrote it, compiled it, translated it into uh, assembly language, and uh, produced an executable, and it runs. Eh, good enough. Alrighty. Um, I apologize to anybody who's making the mistake of listening to this. Um, it was mostly just a test of my RISC V machine. I will produce a schedule of technology and topics and things I'm going to look at, and I'll post that, and then maybe people will have an idea of, hey, on this given day, uh, this guy's going to be covering off uh, MySQL database servers and stuff like that, and how to do SSL encrypted MySQL communications uh, from C source code right into MySQL databases and uh, how to do queries and how to do, you know, insert records and query for records, how to do record rollback and things like that um, in, in the source code. Okay, anyway, so thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, okay, okay, bye.